All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to show you how to hook your Nintendo Switch Pro Controller up to your Windows PC by using DS4 Windows. This is a pretty simple process. Um, what it's going to do is it's going to pretend that your controller is an Xbox 360 controller because most games, especially ones on PC, are all built based around using the Xbox controller because that's considered the PC controller. So to get this working, all you have to do is download three things. The first thing is DS4 Windows. DS4 Windows is the main program, and when you look it up, and I'll put the links to the video description to go directly to these so you don't have to look it up, is uh, if you look it up, the result you want is down here on GitHub made by Ryochan7 under releases. I don't know who makes this first website or the third website here, but those are not the um, actual developer or current developer of DS4 Windows. So just ignore those two and go directly to the source on GitHub. From here, we're going to want to grab DS4 Windows itself, the 64-bit edition. You can grab the .zip or the .7-zip if you have 7-zip on your computer. So I'll go ahead and click on that and download that to my controller download folder that I've already got set up. And then after that, we're going to need the .NET framework, which is right here listed on the actual release page. And the .NET framework, we're just going to click as well. And that's a little framework released by Microsoft for free. And we'll just save that to the same folder that app developers can use to quickly and easily build their apps based on Microsoft's computer architecture. And then the last thing that we need is called Vision Bus. And Vision Bus is a software that allows you to interface with the hid hide technology of all major modern controllers. And we're just gonna go ahead and click on this first result here by Nefarious. And then we're going to grab the latest edition that was updated November 2nd, 2023 and save that to this file as well. And once you've got all three of those, we can just open the folder that they're all downloaded to. And we will start by installing the .NET Framework runtime right here. And just run through and install that. I've already got it installed on my PC in preparation for this tutorial, but it should only take you a few seconds to install these. It doesn't even require you to restart your computer. So install the Windows desktop runtime for .NET, and then go ahead and install the Vision Bus driver as well. And then once those two things are installed, we should be good to go to actually start playing around with DS4 Windows itself. Now, before we go any further, just because it helps to support the channel, I am an affiliate for NordVPN. If you're looking for a VPN that'll help keep your computer and your internet connection private and secure. I totally recommend NordVPN. It helps prevent people from snooping on your internet traffic, especially if you go out and you use your laptop on public Wi-Fi sources. It's got a built-in ad blocker. You can easily connect from anywhere to a, their dozens and hundreds of servers from around the globe. And it's also got built-in protections, sort of like an ad blocker or a, a virus protection software to help keep nasty stuff off of your computer. So if you're looking for one, I have a discount code built into a URL in the video description below. It helps to support the channel, and I would appreciate it if you did click on it, if you're in the market for a VPN. So to get the S4 Windows running, we just need to find the zip file that we downloaded, right-click it, and extract it to a file of the same name. I like to do that because not all of these programs are packaged the same way. And you don't want this big list of gook inside of this folder to spill out all over your desktop. It makes it very messy. And then you're trying to move stuff without breaking stuff and it's whatever. Uh, but once you've got this open, the program that you want to run is DS4 Windows right here. Go ahead and give that little rainbow looking one a click. And then it'll ask you where you want to save your settings. I always recommend putting them in the program folder because the program folder, then if something happens and it starts to act weird, you can just delete your DS4 Windows folder, extract a new copy, set it up again, and not have to spend as much time removing stuff. 
And then once you've clicked on that, you'll have this first launch window pop open. This is what devices do you want DS4 window to look for? Out of the box, this is meant to be run with the PlayStation 4 controller, but it also supports PlayStation 5, Switch Pro controller, Joy-Cons, and PlayStation 3. We want to use this for the Switch Pro controller right now, so we want to select the Switch Pro device. Um, I don't know why it doesn't just say Pro Controller, because that's what it is, but whatever. Um, you can also use this for the Joy-Cons, but you'll have to con connect those either with Bluetooth or with the charging um, dock grip thing that you can buy off of Amazon. So I will select the Switch Pro Controller and click Close, and then once I click Close, this should open up and it should be ready for me to plug in my Pro Controller which I will do right now because I've had it charging for the last half hour. And once Windows detects it and is like, yay, controller, it should pop up here. Although do note that sometimes the Nintendo controllers don't always like it when you plug them in, so that might mean that I have to connect it via Bluetooth, which wouldn't be the worst thing ever, but it's just a slight nuisance. And it looks like that's what's happening, so to connect it via Bluetooth, we will just have to open up our settings and then inside of settings, you should have the devices tab, click on devices, and then Bluetooth should be the first option that opens up. So let me unplug this. And then there's on the top of your Switch Pro Controller where you plug it in, there's a little button next to the plug hole. Go ahead and click on that until the light across from it flashes. Or at least it's supposed to flash. I don't know if it's gonna. Basically, that's how well, you put this into pairing mode. And then you can click on add a new device here at the top of the screen. I'm going to click on Bluetooth. And then here you can see at the top is the Pro Controller. I press and held on that button at the top for like six seconds. So that should be all you need for it to start doing its thing. And then now this is paired with my controller. So now you can see my Pro Controller is detected with Bluetooth. It should allow me to plug it in, but it doesn't want to. So that just goes to show if one method of connecting it doesn't want to behave itself, try a different one. And then I should be at this point good to go. I can go start playing and my computer will think that I'm running with a pro controller. Uh, unfortunately, it will start show or continue to show Xbox button configurations on the screen. There is no real way to get this to emulate a Nintendo controller. The only way is to get it to emulate a uh, PlayStation controller. There is no current way to get it to fake that it's being an actual Nintendo controller. And there's even less games out there on PC that actually have any type of support for Nintendo controllers. So that would probably just break things anyway. So unfortunately, you're stuck with Xbox buttons for right now. Um, you can do something different on Steam. If you use the Steam drivers, I will be covering that in a different set of instructions and guides later. Um, if for whatever reason you want to switch what kind of controller you've got plugged into this uh, to like your Joy-Cons and you want to set up the other support, you can click on settings and you can go to device options, this little button here on the right hand side. That opens up this little panel with that same little checkbox that you saw at the start of this tutorial. You can just switch to Joy-Cons rather than Pro Controller and then hit Exit. And then you should be good to go. Um, there is a little light up blue button on the front of this. Can I change that color? Is that a thing? I don't think it's a thing. No, it's not. It's still blue. Okay, so that just stays blue. On the controller, when it's paired via Bluetooth, there's a little blue ring around the home button that lights up and stays blue, uh, just to tell you that it's connected to your PC, and that doesn't really change. So there you have it. Uh, the only other note I have is uh, you have to leave DS4 windows open when you're playing games or else it won't work because it has to be open and running for it to function as a go-between as your driver. And that's about it. I will say that this doesn't work super great all the time. And there are some latency issues when it comes to 
using Bluetooth controllers that aren't Xbox controllers on the Windows PC. So if you're having a lot of problems or this is becoming maddening experience for you, I recommend getting an Xbox controller. If you're still having problems after that with this software, you can do things like run DS4 Windows as admin, or you can restart your computer to make sure all of the software that we just installed is properly behaving itself and registered with your computer's operating system. So that'll be it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will catch you next time. Don't forget to um, do the likey, subscribey thing, and uh, bye.